Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I'd like to share with you how I created this using Vertex Paint. A lot of the time I think Vertex Paint goes under the radar as something that's not actually that useful, but this is a pretty good use that I found for it. So as a quick overview, basically what we're going to be doing with Vertex Paint is painting some maps onto this sculpted object, which doesn't have any UVs. And these maps will tell Blender which um, shaders I want in which specific areas of the model. So you can see there's kind of a stream bed thing here. And like I said, the textures aren't mapped very well at the moment. But there's um, like kind of wet stones there and grass up here. And then there's kind of a cliff face here. And this is all the same object and all the same material. And there are no UVs on this. So let's just do that real quick. I'm going to go into my vertex colors panel here on the object data and I'm just going to delete that color map and I'll tell you how to build the material in a second but first let's just hop into vertex paint and I'll show you what I did. So my first step was to take the hue down to zero and the saturation up to one and the value up to one and that just gives us a red brush and if we go well fall off shouldn't be an issue if we just turn up the radius a whole bunch and turn up the strength a whole bunch this should paint out as solid red, and we can just kind of swipe over the whole object real quick. Nice, that's looking good. There's some little cracks down here that we can get. And this might be kind of weird at the moment, but basically what we're going to do is set up um, a red channel and a green channel and a blue channel. And just to keep things simple and intuitive, I'm going to make it so that the green is where the grass goes and the blue is where the stream bed goes. So we could just kind of paint stuff out like this. And of course you can take down your strength and be a little bit more soft about it if you want. You can just paint a little bit of grass, like um, probably areas like this that are a little bit upright would have some greenery growing on them. So I'm gonna scale down my brush and just kind of paint in some soft green there. And here, just to show you how it works. And we can spend a lot of time on this map, but let's just move along to the stream bed. So just a solid blue color we'll be using for this. And I'm just going to go like this, make sure my strength is up. And we can go like that. Nice. And yeah, we'll mess with that in a second here. If you kind of want to blur the edges a little bit more, there's this smudge brush. and We can kind of take the green and smudge it over here. And we can take the blue and make it so that the stones kind of fade out here a little bit. And of course we could put grass over here and all that good stuff, but let's just hop over to the shader now and I'll show you how to put this together. So in the shading tab, I have this as the material so far, and I've just got my three shaders here. I'm assuming you know how to set up shaders, but this is just a unique way of combining them together. So we've got the rock shader at the top here, that is kind of our cliff object, and I've just got a whole bunch of textures plugged into a principled node. And of course I've got grass, and I also have some smooth wet rocks. And so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go shift A, input, and then vertex color. And here you can find your vertex map that you painted. If we have node wrangler enabled in the add-ons and go control shift, and click that. If we go into rendered, you can just see our map appears immediately here. So that's pretty cool. Now what we want to do is go converter and then separate RGB. And with this guy, you can see very specifically, this is the white parts are the red parts and the black parts are all the other parts. But if we go to the green channel, you can see, hey, this is our grass. And if we go to the blue channel, that is our stream bed. Now the cool thing about this is we can use it to go if we go shader and then mix shader, we can just drop that right on top there and then go, well, I'd like my rock shader to be mixed with my grass shader. And I want it to be mixed with this green value here. So I'm gonna plug that into factor. And if we view it here, it might take a second, but here is our grass and here's our rock. And then for the other rocks, I'm just gonna duplicate the mix shader and we can plug that right into there and it's trying to calculate it all here for a second, so that might take a little bit. But if we just grab the blue and drop that into the factor, then our rocks appear here. And if you want to kind of mess with the blending, of course you can do that with 
color ramps, which I love. If the grass needs, if you think it needs to be like expanded a bit more, you can always grab your color ramp here and select it. And if we crank up the white values, you can see that just sort of pushes it out to the edges. I would be careful with this because if you do it too much, you can see the blue starts to come into it. So kind of be careful with that. And Blunder just crashed on me. So uh, yeah, don't forget to save, folks. <laughs> so that's pretty much all for this technique. If you found this tutorial helpful and you'd like to see more like it, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements. And what this will actually do is sign you up for my email list, and I'll make sure the first thing I send you is a pack of free hydraulic kit bash elements. And these are designed for Blender users to kind of give them a little bit of a boost in mechanical projects. I use them all the time on mechs. As well as the hydraulics, every Saturday I send out an email, and that'll just have the link to the tutorial for that week. But that'll pretty much wrap it up. I'll catch you again real soon. Cheers!